Hey, so I guess I better continue on then. So, brief synopsis. Tony Lowe run into a bit of an incident thanks to Tony not listening to his wife who wanted to move on in life and kind of just like put her uh, family ties in the rearview mirror, you know, and focus on her two sons who were with their father because of that family life cost her that connection because that was used against her um, later on by their father and so she was doing what she needed to do to stay away from all that to try to make sure that she maintains a good position to be able to say hey I'm a good parent here and um, Tony's whole focus was just determination to try to work up whatever so um, his choices and that's where I'm trying to trying to press that narrative strongly that um, sometimes our associations and decisions we make are the very thing that put us in these hardships and um, so uh, he got them both caught up in a real bad pickle man and so she needed money and I made a lot of money when I was in Kosovo Um, I was deployed stacked a lot of money somewhere I don't know between like 14 and 20 grand I had in the bank when I got we came back to uh, we went from Kosovo to Macedonia and then we were able to rotate back to Germany not long thereafter (sighs) so I took that money and uh, I went back to Amsterdam because on uh, New Year's of 1999, turn of the century, 2000, I went to Amsterdam with two of my army buddies, Mike Christian and Michael Beatum. And uh, I tripped out. I saw something that was like, hmm, this is, this is a trip. Now, I'm, when I landed in Germany in 1999, I was awestruck because... I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm in Europe. I'm in Germany. This is like, mind-blowing. And um, so it was was exciting. You're 23 years old. You're in another country. You're an American. You're an infantryman. So you're just like, you're uh, you're there. And um, I had grown up after running away, living in Napa and then running away and eventually that led me to go to San Diego and meeting different people from a different pace of life and different experiences. There's a, a euphoria that came with that, you know, the house parties and the fun and highland cruising and just gunplay and just all kinds of crazy stuff that most people only see in movies or whatever. Um, so it's a trip there's an allure there's a an attraction and then you meet people along the way and one of the people i met was my friend that's in mexico well we're not friends no more anything but but as i grew up as a teenager this was one of my closest comrades and um i always observed him and he took really good care of people uh it's close to circle for the most part um uh, Things not so much later on down the road. And that's what ended up led, leading to, to so many people's divide with him. So, oh, excuse me. Mm. Keeping that in mind, when I stepped into Amsterdam and then went to Kosovo and came home, um, and I did my own thing, I always took care of people. And um, I still came with consequences. But I had money over in Europe, right? So Lowe needed money for two reasons. And so they were like, hey, can you go? So I got a plane ticket and and I left. And I went to Europe and I sent her money from Europe. And uh, I stayed there. 
I was gonna be there for two months. But uh sorry, I'm getting text messages. Um a month in, I was like I said, I, I was on the phone, I was told that my my one of my closest buddies, Gabriel, uh his brother Christian, Christian Serrano, Gabriel Serrano was my buddy, and his brother was Christian Serrano, aka we called him Murphy. And I hadn't seen Murphy in a long time. And I, I wasn't so tight with Murphy, but I, I mean, that was Gabriel's brother. And I knew him from before. He had kind of like disappeared. And from what I gather, he moved to New York for years. I didn't know why. Nobody really knew why. He just took off with his family. Oh, well, his, I don't know if his girlfriend, his wife, whatever. And uh, oh, I didn't even know he was back. But to find out that he had uh, been murdered. And the impact I knew immediately that it had on his brother, because that was, you know, that's his brother, and his sister. I was really tight with his sister with him, and uh, his mother had to go down into Mexico. Now, these a lot of these murders I'm talking about, these happen in Mexico, uh, so it's not like here. It's a done deal, you know. It's a wrap. So I'm not exposing nobody for nothing, or it's, it's it is what it is, you know. Unfortunately. Uh, but uh, his mother had to go down there and identify the body. And the way the bruises were on the wrist and everything, that gave the indication that he had been handcuffed. So it was more than likely that he was picked up by whoever set him set him up, uh, by the judiciales, like the state police, which if you know anything about TJ, eventually they went and took all the guns away from the Tijuana police because they knew they were the ones doing the killings. Um, and if you know about TJ, it's usually the judiciales that, that, that were uh, about that life. Because um, there's different ones. There's the municipal, there's the grupo, the judiciales, and there's the federal, I don't know, AFI or whatever. There's different police forces in Mexico. Um, but in, in Tijuana, they eventually sent the pepos, uh, like in 2006, I want to say, or four. Um, no, yeah, I think it was 2006. Between 2006 and 2008, I remember, because I would go down to TJ and see those fools. They'd roll around on two flatbed trucks, ski masks uh, on both sides, like full the the flatbeds, two flatbeds, back-to-back, -back, like driving in a convoy. And on each side, uh, the, the pepos, those soldiers that were like, you know, paramilitary. Then you see two Suburbans in front and then two Suburbans in the back. And they were just rolling around TJ, and they weren't messing around. And they they had taken the guns away from the TJ police and gave them sh uh, slingshots because they knew they couldn't be trusted to kind of just like, you know, I don't want to say humiliated, but yeah, to show them like, man, you guys, you guys, you guys can't be trusted. So here's a slingshot. So Murphy, to the best of our knowledge, was more than likely picked up by Mexican police by whoever set the trap, some corrupt police, and then he was beaten, tortured. And it, a probably more than likely plastic bagged and thrown uh, behind a dumpster like a dead dog. And it, that's the way she, my, bro, my his brother said it, you know, because it broke his heart to know that his brother fought for his for his life, and uh, and it was discarded like a dog, you know. And that, that he would he would weep when he would say that because he you know it just it hurt him to think that he couldn't be there in his brother's last moments of life. And I always say, just like my friend Mariana and the other people that I know that that had horrible deaths on the way out, those last moments alive where they had to have known that this was it and that the death, there was no way out of it, um, that it's something they maybe could have prevented had they made another decision, but their fate was sealed. So that's... Um, that's the irony of that. But, uh... When I came back from Amsterdam... That led to a whole bunch of chaos. And eventually when I got back to San Diego... And there was a, a, a huge gap. Something happened. And so when I showed back up in San Diego... I went to go see... Gabriel, like me, him, and this other mutual... Uh, associate friend of ours... The one that I was with in TJ when I bumped into uh, Tony and Lowe. Um, 
it was an utter chaos because I didn't know what what was being said or you know what the what the divide had happened. All I knew was I showed up and I'm like, hey, where's the, you know the three amigos? And they're like, there ain't no more three amigos because uh, he's pretty confident that his best friend set a trap. And now I'm in the middle. I'm like, like what? I got I got one best friend saying to the other, that the other best friend has something to do with the demise of his brother. And it's it's like, whoa, man, you're like in the middle of two of the people you care about the most. And it's like, what? This one says something. He has a compelling argument. And the other one has an argument not as compelling. And it's like, you got to make a decision. Like, what do you believe? Who do you believe? Did you, did you, did somebody that you revere, uh, have hand in such a horrible betrayal to this other dude that was so loyal to this cat? We was all like tight friends, like man, back to back fighting in TJ, you know, three of us fighting with three or four of us fighting like eight people. Um, just like years and years of, of uh, friendship just just obliterated and um, that day that I asked Lo about it she pretty much let me know that yeah I mean not her she was like yeah mm-hmm, yeah and she said you know I ain't got nothing to lie I had no hand in it and then when I got a hold of Tony he pretty much said the same thing so it's like mind blown We'll get back to that pretty soon.